Welcome to CES 2020. This is a microchip technology booth. My name is Wayne Freeman, and we're going to show you all about smart, connected, and secure technology. So you've got lots of demos around here. Let's go. Okay. We've got lots of demos around here. In fact, let's talk to this gentleman here about the smart steering wheels. Hey. Hi. This is uh, Perak Boxy from Microchip. Okay. And uh, what I'm showing is uh, a new automotive technologies for HMI. Uh, there's two technology trends that we're addressing over here. Uh, we'll start out with the first one, which is uh, right in the center over here. As you can see, the screen sizes are getting much larger. Uh, 8 and 10 is not standard anymore. You're talking about 15, 17, 19 inches, right? Uh, when those sizes get really large, you actually lose a lot of real estate that you have for mechanical buttons and encoders. So what we've done is given an ability to bring the encoders into the display. As an example, we actually have a passive knob over here that's part of the active display, and there's really no electronics behind it. It's just a mechanical contraption, as you can see. Adhere it right on the screen, and you're able to get really good encoding out of the system. So uh, is a capacitive technology? The, the solution here itself inherently is capacitive in nature, but this here is just another mechanical passive piece that you have adhered on top. It's taking advantage of the capacitance in order to figure out what the encoding angles are. All right? uh, what we also have over here is a display on knob. An alternative to a knob on display, we have another way of actually implementing a knob, uh, a display over a knob kind of a solution. You can touch on it and uh, control various uh, features. Is there, so you do the technology that's to that do with the knob or the display or? This is actually still capacitive. Everything here is still capacitive in nature. We're using one of our uh, MXT devices in order to develop this solution. Uh, What's happening with these displays so here? The other technology that we were going to show is the, the trend that the automotive guys are looking at developing ultra-wide sensors, ultra-wide displays. Uh, well, we have developed the solutions that will allow you to create different aspect ratios from 7 to 1, 5 to 1, 8 to 1, up to 45 inches using a single chip controller. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to start seeing in a couple of years where the OEMs actually are asking for pillar-to-pillar -pillar kind of a solution. Uh, we're enabling that kind of a solution using our MXT controller. Products. So it's uh, controlling the touch screen? It's controlling the touch screen here as well. So you're interacting touch over here. Here's an example. We have the, the side view mirror. Uh, you can zoom and pan, right? It kind of gives you the ability to bring everything inside the car, improves your aerodynamics, improves your fuel efficiencies. Same thing applies over here as well. So we have the ability to touch at all these different areas and you can go all the way up to 45 inches with a single chip controller. All right, uh, single chip, capacitive touch controller. Yes. Special functions yeah. around that. Correct. Especially for automotive, you need to have uh, reliability. Uh, for automotive, you actually do need reliability and functional safety. So we're also integrating a lot of functional safety, which is running diagnostics while the acquisition is being done uh, without actually compromising the latency or okay. the performance of the system itself. All right, and then I'll check out some of the other systems around Absolutely. here. Absolutely. All right, maybe uh, we can hang over the, the, the microphone. Um, so I'm just coming over here. Oops. You can get mic, mic top right here. Hello. Yeah, we met uh, last year. Chad. Yeah. Yeah. So you can have it right sure. there. Maybe you can. Uh, uh, yeah, snap, if you want to get it, it for me. Snap it on. Right, sure. right there. Cool. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, stick back yeah. on my belt or uh, something. In the front, sir. Oh, front, in the front, front better yeah, for a blue. interference, otherwise. Oh, got it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so what are you showing around here? Sure, so um, we're showing off some things that you can do with Max Touch that you can't quite do on your cell phone or your tablet. This is a ruggedized tablet from a company called Juniper Systems, and I can grab um, a, a normal wooden pencil. So this isn't your, your, two, your $100 Apple pencil. This is a two-cent uh, <laughs> number two pencil from Staples or, or, uh, or Office Depot. I'm going to make the situation even harder by grabbing a leather glove that's also not conductive. Wood, of course, doesn't conduct electricity or electrons either. The lead in the pencil is conductive. So I can take advantage of our very high SNR or signal-to-noise ratio and grab this and write on a 
capacitive touchscreen. It's amazing all of the amount of technology we put into play just to get a two cent pencil to work on a touchscreen, but this is uh, amazing physics here. We're relying on a very small amount of charge displacing from the touch sensor. Those small amount of electrons jump into the lead of the pencil. They don't have anywhere to go. There's just more electrons in the sensor than there is in the pencil, so a few of them will jump across. We can count them and track them accurately and reliably on a running Windows uh, tablet here with a noisy charger. Our CES demos are all kind of powered together. Tremendously noisy. Um, also in a floating state, it works great as well. But uh, in, the, uh, in the noisy state, the noise is often much bigger than the level of signal. So uh, being able to pull off something like this is, uh, is an impressive feat. So it's in a, in a uh, capacitive touchscreen uh, firmware and uh, the algorithm there, There's and stuff. hardware and firmware. So um, we're, we're leveraging um, some patents that we have that allow us to sense touch uh, differentially. Um, which helps eliminate the common mode noise from coming into the controller. And then we have some sophisticated algorithms, many of which are patented to avoid noise and then filter noise that is broad spectrum and can't be, uh, can't be filtered. And you have some more touch screen demos around here? Absolutely. So um, this is uh, another couple of demos showing the use of a thick glove uh, on a touch screen. So let's find the calculator. Uh, here it is. And we can show that you can still use a uh, calculator reliably and accurately through uh, the presence of a of a thick glove. There it is. Nice. Yeah. So this, it's um, it's hard to do. This is very hard to do. Um, it, it effectively looks like a hovering uh, finger. In fact, if I take the glove off and I hover my, my finger above the sensor, yeah. you can see that we can tell the difference between a glove and a hovering touch. My hovering finger doesn't uh, detect a touch, but when my finger is in a glove, then and only then does it report uh, the touch. All right. What are you sure around here? Sure. So this is a brand new chip. This is called the MXT 2952TD. So it's a uh, different a different uh, chip, new technology from us. It's using a, a, another patent of ours called uh, differential mutual sensing. I showed you before, we're working with one very thick finger. There's other controllers in the market that can do a single thick finger as well. What we're able to do though is work with now multi-touch. Thick gloves, we can rotate, we can zoom, we can pinch, and I've got two very thick gloves at play. This is something that's really quite revolutionary, especially when you consider the fact that this is an eight millimeter cover glass equivalent. This monitor originally had 1.1 millimeter glass. We took a six millimeter piece of glass with an air gap and glued this whole thing together so that now it looks like eight millimeters of glass. Just sensing a bare finger through such a thick lens is a challenge. Adding a thick glove on top of that, now that's really tough. Nice. Um, and uh, what's happening here? This is um, Garmin uh, Marine. It's a marine GPS and fish finder. We can uh, support lots of water on the system. So picture rain coming down, you're on a boat, it's very rainy, no false touches, but you still want to be able to use the GPS and you want to be able to use it with multi-touch. So you expect that your multiple touches should still work reliably and accurately. Now let's picture that there's a tsunami and big ocean waves are starting to come and crash up on the boat. Now we've got 5% salt water. 5% is the saltiest water you find in oceans. Most ocean water is 3.5%. As water gets saltier and saltier, it becomes more and more conductive and becomes frankly a nightmare for a capacitive touchscreen. If you spray this water on your cell phone or on your tablet, 5% saline, it'll go crazy. Uh, human blood um, saline solution in the medical environment is only 0.9% uh, saline. It's frankly pretty easy for us. 5%, this is a big challenge. So spray this on, we notice that there's no false touches at all. And now I can still, even with moving salt water around my finger, I can still use the touch screen. So that means that our fisherman who's on the boat in the tsunami can navigate home safely to his family thanks to Max Touch technology. Tsunami is a pretty um, uh, challenging thing. I hope, I hope our I fisherman hope is not happen. out there on his own in a little boat, but if it comes along while he's fishing, he can now uh, use Garmin. If it's out GPS. in the deep sea, it's okay. That's right. As far as I remember. <laughs> All right. So um, here is our uh, 3D gesture technology that we're showing. This is a light switch simulation. We can show the range here that the light switch is just woken up with this kind of a range. I can now uh, turn on the lights um, with, <laughs> uh, I can now use a, an air wheel gesture to turn the lights back on, to dim the lights or turn them back up, make them a little bit brighter. 
Turn is this them on capacitive technology Also again? capacitive, yes. Everything that we do now in microchip for touch sensing or air gesture sensing is all capacitive based. So we're relying on electric fields here. So this, same, this is a, a kind of a demonstration board showing a light switch. Um, this same technology has been integrated into several uh, shipping products. This is a little video wall showing a Jaguar moonroof that uses it to open and close the moonroof. A Sony speaker, a smart mirror from Burbank where you can turn on and off the lights, and a Muriel photo frame in the lower right. We have that frame in the home uh, section where you can change artwork all with uh, a gesture of your hand. This is um, a speaker set from Cambridge Audio. Uh, from the UK that has uh, integrated the same gesture technology to control the speaker. So as my hand approaches, you'll see the speaker is just lit up. So now these capacitive touch buttons have been revealed. I can play music or pause music, and then I can also switch to the next track, all without having to touch the speaker. This is on the market. I'm sorry? It's for sale in the market. That's correct, yes. Um, I think $250 on Amazon. They also have batteries in them too, left and right, and they run for several hours off of batteries. Nice. And you so, have more and more stuff. Can you just uh, oh. put this on the other side? Yes. Because there's interference sure. in my things. Uh, so, yeah. what do you show here? So this one is uh, kind of the integration of everything I've shown you, our 2D and 3D technology merging together. So here we have a system. This could be full screen um, album art if you listen to music. It could be full screen uh, GPS or maps if you're using it to navigate. When your hand comes in range, now the GUI changes and you can see your settings buttons. So we can now um, navigate through menus and choose which menu we want to go into, all with using gestures. I can go down and we can switch through some slides. I'm controlling this all without even touching the system. Think about a medical environment where doctors, as soon as they touch a surface, they have to wash their hands again. Now you can scroll through x-ray images, you can zoom in, zoom out, all without having to touch the system. Is this, uh, all this stuff is brand new, is already, except for those speakers and other bunch of uh, things in the market? So yes, this chip is, uh, has been shipping for a few years. We have a new generation of chip. This is now automotive grade. Uh, and there's uh, a new version that's both automotive and industrial grade that's been released to mass production um, uh, middle of last year. Uh, so that's just now um, getting designed into new products. Into um, new cars. In, into new cars and, and other kinds of systems. Getting all these stuff in the cars. That's right. Uh, this is a technology demonstration where we're merging the gesture chip and our MaxTouch 2D touchscreen technology together. So this is a multi-chip chip set um, that we're demonstrating as a technology to, to drive the new use cases. All right, and this is a form? Finally, you've seen um, our, I think, some of our knob on display technology um, in the automotive use case. This is showing a home appliance environment. So we have an oven above us, and then we have uh, an oven below. Left knob controls the top oven, right knob controls the bottom oven. We can set our cooking mode, touch in the middle, and then change the temperature of the oven. Click it again, and now we change our time that we want to cook at, and then click it, and we've now started cooking, all with uh, using a very ergonomic. And knob. these are fixed permanently, or it can stick on and stick off. They're or? they're stuck in place. We use a uh, a 3M automotive grade double stick tape. Our Max Touch controller needs to know the size, the shape, and position of the knob, and it's basically a software-defined knob. It's a standard touch sensor. There's no special sensor pattern uh, design required. Um, the, you just need a special controller to, uh, to handle the knob. All right. That's a lot of cool touch technologies right here. Very good. This also? Yeah, this is uh, one of our partners called Greyhill. So I just showed you knob on display. This is the opposite here. This is display on knob, where Greyhill is taking a max touch touch screen and integrating it onto a mechanical knob. This knob feels wonderful. This is a really great uh, sensation, that Hall effect sensor, so kind of traditional mechanical knob, but they're bringing it into the modern era by adding a touch screen. So I can swipe between different modes. Here I can change uh, my fading. Uh, if I swipe this way, I can now, I'm on FM. I can swipe again, I'm on AM, I can change my frequency. Here, I'm on satellite radio, just as one of many different nice. use case examples. And this is showing a, a trend in many different industries moving towards in-mold electronics, where electronics can physically be mounted, and including touch sensors, behind plastic that gets thermoformed into different shapes. So imagine an automotive environment where you can feel where the volume controls are or the temperature controls without having to look at them. 
And here you've got haptic feedback as well. So I can feel the sensation. I know something's happening. And you can get audio feedback from the system as well. It's vibrating? It's vibrating. So give, give that a feel. Whoa. It's vibrating the whole surface? It vibrates. Uh, lo where there's I'm... some localization. So you get a little sensation kind of near where your finger is it pressing. That's cool. Um, some of these are force enabled as well. So if you touch lightly, nothing happens. But if you press a little harder, it feels like you're pressing a button. All right. So this is another growing trend called in mold electronics. Nice. We hope you have enjoyed this video. And for more videos, go to freakphysics.com.